or create some of the most horrific circumstances many humans have ever experienced. Some people end up living with ailments and disabilities that last them a lifetime, while others end up coming out of the war a hero. These heroes do some of the most insane feats you can imagine, and earn medals of high honor. This is the story of one of those heroes. Welcome back to the Told You Another Story channel. In this video, we will be looking at the story of the craziest soldier who has ever lived. When we say there are soldiers who are tagged heroes of war, we aren't talking of men who look like Captain America or Superman. We're talking about men who put their lives on the line either for the sake of their missions or for the lives of their comrades. These men earned the title of heroes, and Sir Adrian Cotton de Wyatt was one of them. Sir Adrian Cotton de Wyatt came from an aristocratic family in Brussels and was born on May 5, 1880, as the eldest son of Leon Constant Gishlain Cotton de Wyatt and Ernestine Wenzig. His contemporaries widely believed him to be an illegitimate child of King Leopold II of the Belgians. He spent his early days in Belgium and England. However, after losing his mother, when he was six, his father moved the family to Cairo so he could practice at Egypt's mixed courts. Biographers mostly assumed that his mother had died in 1886. However, that wasn't the case, as his parents had, in fact, divorced that year while his mother remarried Demosthenes Gregory Kuppa later in 1886. Adrian's father was a magistrate, lawyer, and director of the Cairo Electric Railways and Heliopolis Oasis Company, which meant he was well-connected in Egyptian governmental circles. As a result, Adrian learned to speak Arabic with time. In 1891, Adrian's English stepmother sent him to a boarding school in England called the Roman Catholic Oratory School, which was founded by John Henry Newman. After that, he went to Balliol College in Oxford but left to join the British Army at the time of the Second Boer War around 1899. When he applied, he entered under the false name of Trooper Carton, claiming to be 25 years old, even though his real age was just 20 years. Adrian was wounded in the groin and stomach in South Africa early in the war, and was sent back home. His father was not very happy when he learned his son had abandoned his studies at Oxford, but allowed him to remain in the army. After another brief period at Oxford, he was commissioned in the 2nd Imperial Light Horse. He saw action in South Africa once more, and on September 14, 1901, was given a regular commission as a second lieutenant in the 4th Dragoon Guards. He was later transferred to India in 1902. This injury in South Africa was the beginning of a long history of what some would call a damaging and toxic relationship with one's body. When World War I initially started, Adrian was en route to British Somaliland, where a low-level war was in progress against the followers of dervish leader Muhammad bin Abdullah, also known as the Mad Mullah by the British. Adrian had been seconded to the Somaliland Camel Corps, and in an attack upon an enemy fort at Shimberberis, Adrian was shot twice in the face, which cost him his eye and also a portion of his ear. While this would have been a sad and career-ending event, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Order, or DSO, on May 15, 1915. In February 1915, Adrian boarded a steamer for France and took part in the fighting on the Western Front, commanding sequentially three infantry battalions and a brigade. As you might have guessed, he was wounded seven more times in the war, and this had cost him his left hand in 1915. Apparently, he ended up pulling off his fingers when a physician declined to remove them. That wasn't even the worst of it, as he was also shot through the skull and ankle at the Battle of the Somme, through the hip at the Battle of Paschendale, through the leg at Cambrai, and through the ear at Arras. Afterwards, he went to the Sir Douglas Shields nursing home to try and recover from his injuries. He was awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest award for gallantry in combat that can be awarded to British Empire forces. In 1916, with his citation stating, For most conspicuous bravery, coolness, and determination during severe operations of a prolonged nature, it was owing in a great measure to his dauntless courage and inspiring example that a serious reverse was averted. He displayed the utmost energy and courage in forcing our attack home. After three other battalion commanders had become casualties, he controlled their commands and ensured that the ground won was maintained at all costs. He frequently exposed himself in the organization of positions and supplies, passing unflinchingly through the fire barrage of the most intense nature. His gallantry was inspiring to all. Three days before the war was over, on November 8th, Adrian was given command of a brigade with the rank of temporary brigadier general. 
One of the soldiers, A.S. Bullock, described his arrival, stating, Cold shivers went down the back of everyone in the brigade, for he had an unsurpassed record as a fire eater, missing no chance of throwing the men under his command into whatever fighting happened to be going. Bullock recalls how the battalion looked very much the worse for wear when they paraded for the brigadier general's inspection. When Adrian arrived, Bullock stated that he wore his cap tilted at a rakish angle, with a shade over the place where one eye had been. He was also missing two limbs and had about 11 wound stripes. He stayed in Poland after the war and after 15 years his peaceful Polish life came to an end as he was recalled in July 1939 and appointed to his old job as head of the British military mission to Poland. On September 1st, Poland was attacked by Nazi Germany and on September 17th, the Soviets allied with Germany attacked Poland from the east. With time, Soviet forces overran Prostin and Adrian lost all his guns, fishing rods, clothing and furniture. They were taken as prisoners by the Soviets and stored in the Minsk Museum, which was later destroyed by the Germans in later fighting. He escaped this capture and had more feats in the Second World War. He was a very respected officer and when the Italian authorities captured him, he was considered a high-profile prisoner. Adrian was transferred to a special prison for senior officers at Castello di Vincigliata where he made friends with people like General Sir Richard O'Connor, the 6th Earl of Ranfurly, and Lieutenant General Philip Neem, V.C. In letters to his wife, Lord Ranfurly described Adrian in captivity as a delightful character and said he must hold the record for bad language. Lord Ranfurly was endlessly amused by him, stating that he was a really nice person, superbly outspoken. The four prisoners were committed to escaping, and Adrian made five escape attempts, including seven months of tunneling. There was a time when he evaded capture for eight days, disguised as an Italian peasant. He was able to make this work since he was in northern Italy, could not speak Italian, and was 62 years old with an eye patch, one empty sleeve and multiple injuries and scars. Surprisingly, Adrian was released from prison as the Italian government was secretly working towards leaving the war and wanted Adrian to send the message to the British army about a peace treaty with the UK. After returning home from his service during the Second World War and his time as a prisoner of war, he was sent to China as Winston Churchill's personal representative, amongst many other diplomatic missions assigned to him. This didn't stop him from having his crazy injuries, as he still had some pretty strange occurrences very often. One of these occurrences happened when he was en route home through French Indochina. He stopped in Rangoon as a guest of the army commander, and while he was coming down the stairs, he slipped on coconut matting fell down, broke a number of vertebrae, and knocked himself unconscious. He was admitted to Rangoon Hospital, where he was treated. Regardless of his many injuries, he still was an amazing soldier, even though he was pretty crazy to say the least. Adrian Carton de Wyatt wrote in his memoirs, Governments may think and say as they like, but force cannot be eliminated, and it is the only real and unanswerable power. We are told that the pen is mightier than the sword, but I know which of these weapons I would choose. Thank you for watching this video. Hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.